I'm Ross Smith. Uh, I was born here in Josephine County. My family homesteaded and uh, settled in the Illinois Valley 100 years ago. I've been involved in this county for well over 20 years uh, in the community, working hard to protect private property rights and wise stewardship of our public lands. Uh, very important. I uh, uh, was involved in, uh, uh, they tried to turn the whole Siskiyou National Forest into a monument. Does anybody remember that in the year 2000? Uh, I was deeply involved in that. And we, we organized a, a chapter of people for the USA and we defeated that monument. In the meantime, they, they declared the Sis Cascade Siskiyou National Monument over in uh, Ashland. You all heard of that one, the one that they had problems with. Okay, uh, I, also I was involved in, uh, when the, do you remember when the Klamath farmers lost their water rights? That was a pretty big deal. Uh, they, we, we organized, bucket, helped organize a bucket brigade. We put 20,000 people in the streets. We took a bucket after bucket from the head gates to the lake, symbolically showing that the water needed to go to those farmers. That, that land was lotted out to World War I and World War II veterans, very important. Uh, we were involved in uh, a rally we put on in Medford. Uh, we organized uh, uh, 1,500 people showed up in 23 different organizations supporting wise use of our public forest. So is anybody enjoying these smoky summers we're having? Oh yeah. No, no. So, so my question to the, to the uh, we just talked about funding the sheriff, all right? Well, for 80 years we had a fully funded sheriff department. Today we're burning it up. That funding's out there rotting as we talk. It's called trees. We have hundreds of thousands of trees got burned up this last summer and the summer before that. Why do we want to tax the people higher and higher and not harvest some of that timber? At least the dead timber. That, that timber's dead. Let's take it from the mill, this one goes to the kid asking for people's taxes. Private property, I've been an advocate and a protector of private property for over 20 years here in this county. All kinds of different issues. Mining issues, access issues, road issues. Roads will be huge in the future, guarantee you. Watch me, I'm gonna make roads a big deal. All right, because if you can't access a forest, what good is it? These firefighters out here trying to uh, uh, take these fires on found out that the roads are overgrown. They can't get to these areas to fight the fires. That's part of the reason they become so big. So I've, I've been involved in these land use issues, and if you really want to know what a commissioner does, the biggest thing a commissioner does is land use. It's the biggest thing. You want a zoning change, you want a variance, you go to the commissioners. The second biggest thing a commissioner does is ordinances, and that's county law. All right? So, so those are the two biggest things a county commissioner will do, and, then, and those are the things that will affect you. I've been involved in land use issues all my life, it seems like. I've lived here in Josephine County all my adult life. I spent two different trips to Washington, D.C. Once when I was a young man, 24 years old, returning from the mission field, uh, I decided I would have had a day, day to kill, so I stopped in Washington, D.C., walked all around D.C. And, and seen all the sites, uh, uh, the Vietnam Memorial, all everything, the Constitution and the Rotunda. And then the second time I was there was when we went to uh, Washington, D.C. to try to find some relief for the Klamath farmers. We, we took about 10 people there, and we walked all over the Capitol, went into the scene. Hey, you know what? Did you ever see the Senate building? Go look at the Hart Senate building in D.C. It's nothing but marble floors, cherry wood, and walnut walls. But we wouldn't want to mine or log it. <laughs> so, so anyway, we went there trying to try to solve, uh, find some relief for the farmers, and they're still having that problem. It still is an answer. So, when when did we decide that these issues about environment were more important than people? We are the environment. People have worked in the forest all their life, so it's really important. I, you have a county that's 68% federally owned, okay? You add the state, county, and city property, that's 73% of the land. You, just, you get no tax off that. There is no tax base in Josephine County. So when you tax some people, you're gonna tax 8.7% of the land is a high tax rate. It's not gonna work long term. For over 80 years, we had a fully funded sheriff because we harvested trees and replant our forest and we didn't burn them up by the hundreds of thousand acres. That's an important thing. 
Thank you. <laughs> so, so here's, here's the thing. The job description is county commissioner, not city council. So wouldn't you think it would be very important that a commission would know his county? I think it's very important. I know Josephine County. I know it like the back of my hand. I've been involved in these issues all my life, all my adult life. So this is important for us that if you're losing the one guy on the board that actually knows about the force. Simon here is going. All right, Ron, we'll catch you up there. Thank you. And Darren. Well, first of all, I would like to thank Liberty Watch for putting together this uh, forum. For emceeing uh, the event. And uh, those of you who don't know me, I am Darren Fowler, and I grew up here. I'm the husband of one wife, and after 15 years of working for other entrepreneurs, I started my own business 20 years ago, and I found out it was much harder, but it was very rewarding. And the main thing I learned was how to get along with people, other tradesmen, banks, inspectors, uh, building departments, but especially the customer, that bill payer. It really is something to be an entrepreneur and feel that capitalism trust happening where you tell somebody you'll do something for a certain amount and then you do it. Um, I also learned how to sign the front and the back of a check. How to uh, organize workloads, scheduling, how to plan for the future, and to enjoy what you're doing. Uh, but I also learned by experience that wisdom can come from anyone, from anywhere, and I've learned so much from the people of this community. This county is filled with all kinds of sharp people, and that's one of the things I love about this community. It's the people, their experiences, their passions, their ability to thrive here, their love and respect for their neighbors and friends, and so I got involved. Uh, I was already coaching kids, teaching Sunday school. Uh, I was involved in church leadership. And 10 years ago, I really caught the bug to get into politics. And I started volunteering in local government. I was on the Urban and Rural Planning Commissions. I was on the Grants Pass City Council. And I've been the mayor for the past six years of Grants Pass. And I really enjoyed it. Even though it was some of the toughest times that our county and our city had to go through. Uh, we had to come up with inventive ways to uh, put people in jail, to buy jail beds. Um, we had to try and help deal with the juvenile justice uh, diminished down to almost nothing, just three available beds in Medford. Um, and we had limited resources that whole time, but it really produced uh, an opportunity for some leadership. Um, and Dan DeYoung and Lily Morgan were there on the city council with me. Uh, solving those problems, learning how government works. And uh, that leads me to today. And as your commissioner candidate, I'm willing to change careers. At an interesting time in my life, after 30 years in the trades, I'm willing to change careers and serve my fellow Americans. And I want to help our county towards that bright future that I know you guys hope for. And I want to fight for our rights to a good life here, for liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And I believe that my experience volunteering is the difference between the two candidates you see here. And I have a record that reflects my view of representative government, which is means you didn't elect because you agree with my views, it's because you know I'll represent you, that I'll represent the community that I live in, that I raised a family in, uh, started a career and a small business, and I would find solutions that benefit the majority of the citizens. And I'd face every issue with honesty, integrity, and intense work ethic, what I call proven leadership. I wanna thank you for this opportunity to speak with you tonight, and I want to be your representative at the county commissioner's office. Thank you. Okay, folks, Ron Smith now gets to ask a question of Darren. 30 seconds to ask, a minute and a half up to then for a response. Okay, Darren, as quoted in the Ivy News, uh, you said the county should develop uh, the snow park on Page Mountain, which is federally owned. 
I don't know how the county does that. You also said that there was ample property to uh, uh, build horse trails, biking trails, and uh, hiking trails throughout the Illinois Valley. Do you understand our county? Interesting, because I never said either one of those things. Uh, yeah, the paper has been known to be wrong, but I never said anything about the snow park. I never said anything about biking and trails in the Illinois Valley. But I do know that living here for uh, all but four years of my life, um, I've learned, I've lived in the county, my parents live in the county, my in-laws live in the county. Um, like I said, I lived there when I was younger. But because the city is so unique to the county, that we are not an isolated entity at the city. We understand county issues, especially after the last eight, ten years of going through a recession, going through uh, limited funding for government, and seeing how the county reacted to that as was my, one of the main reasons I got involved. And so I think that this county is poised for some really great future events and that families and that people will want to stay here and not leave. And so I'm looking forward to representing the whole county and representing those communities that uh, maybe we don't know as well, but I want to get to know them. I want to go to your meetings. I want to go to your uh, the city council meetings out in uh, Cave Junction. I want to find out what you are aiming towards and help you get there. That's what I promise to do. All right. Gary, you get a chance to ask a question of Ron now. Well, 10 years ago, I started at the bottom of the political ladder. I worked my way up, sitting on over a dozen committees and councils, learning the ropes, networking, learning government, budgeting, and the like. I've given countless hours of my time to do so while still working 50 to 60 hours a week and running a small business. You have had no political experience, so why do you feel that you would be a success in this position? I don't think politics is the answer. I think um, ethics and morals are important. I've been involved in this county volunteering. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the vice chair of the Fruitdale Grange. I am a member of the Redwood Lions Club. I'm a, a, a member of the Pomona Granges, which is all the Granges in Josephine County. So I've spent my time volunteering. I spent countless hours in front of the Board of Commissioners and, and dealing with the Board of Commissioners on important issues. I've been involved in politics. I just haven't been on the other side of the fence. I've been involved in politics on the side that counts, the people's side, not the politician's side. I'm not a tax and spin politician, like some people I know. So I'm not a politician. I'm a guy that wants to serve Josephine County. My grandchildren are here. My children are here, and I hope to make this a better place for my great-grandchildren to grow up. But we're going to have to take control, and we're going to have to have the force stop burning. We've got to stop the smoke, fully fund the sheriff, and we've got to do something to alleviate the housing crisis we have in this county. That's why I'm running. I'm not running as a politician. I'm running as a servant of the people to have your will expressed through county government. Thank you. We'll move along now with a few questions of the audience and uh, ones I'm going to formulate too. A very common uh, grumble that I get about the current Grants Pass, well that's just it. They term it the Grants Pass County Commission is how it gets determined. And, that, and it's from people that I hear from uh, rural Josephine County. It's them, it's not me. How would you, we'll start with you Ron, how would you be a true Josephine County Commissioner? First and foremost, I lived most of my adult life in the Illinois Valley. I know the Illinois like, Valley like the back of my hand. And honest to God, I think it's a big part of the future of the county. If you look at the demographics, if you look at the urban growth, Brown of Cave Junction, the Illinois Valley is very important. These outlying communities are the backbone of this, this place. The problem we have with housing is a city problem. Not only Grants Pass City, but Cave Junction, because it's not going to be answered by the county. The county is a, is a big area, 1,641 square miles, okay? Those people in the outlying communities need to have their voices heard too. I would on a regular basis, and I do right now, I go out to the Illinois Valley quite frequently and talk to people, but go to Williams, Wolf Creek, Murphy, these are all part of the county. As a county commissioner, I have nothing, very little to say about what goes on in the city of Grants Pass or the city of Cape Junction. 
What I deal with as a county commissioner is everything else. And a lot of it's going to revolve around the forest issues. You've got to understand the forest issues. You've got to understand the federal laws to control the forest. So representing the people is, is, is really the foremost thing. You've got to get out and talk to people. You've got to get out and listen to people. That's what I would do to be a representative. All right, thank you, Ron. Karen? Well, I say you never know where leadership is going to come from, and you wouldn't discount anybody for where they live. Um, and like I said before, we are so intertwined as a city and a county that we know each other's problems. And it's not a matter of knowing every nuance in between every community and every political bent of, that, of the areas. It's really getting to know the people and finding out what they want and helping them get there. That's what representative government is. And that's what I plan to do. I've got good friends and relatives uh, that live outside of the city of Grants Pass. And we talk about the issues because they know that I'm interested in it. And that's over the last 10, 12 years, not just subjective talking about it, but actually being in a position to do something about it. The county has addressed the housing problem by changing the rules to allow accessory dwelling units, just like the city. They're allowing uh, other opportunities to put more people on one piece of property in the county. They may receive some resistance from the state of Oregon because of that, uh, but I think it was a step in the right direction. That's the way America lives now. They, they need to have that mother-in-law flat or for their kids or for a rental so that they can uh, plan for their own future. And so uh, I think that where you came from says a lot about who you are, but it's not the only thing. It's are you good at solving problems? Are you good at listening? Are you good at finding the information that will help you make a good decision? And I think that over the uh, past decade or so, I have learned to do that in so many different ways and learned it from so many talented folks that I'm uh, ready to take on this fight. And sometimes I wake up at 3 a.m. going, how in the heck? Is this county going to uh, benefit from me being in office? And I'm just comforted in the fact that I'm one of you. I grew up here. I have a business uh, or work uh, just like you. I raised my family here. And so we are going to work this thing out. We're going to find out what the problems are and we're going to attack them. All right. Karen, you can go ahead and stay up there because I won't have you start the next question. Let it burn, folks, is real. We've talked about it a lot. A lot of meetings have been going on about this. It's been around since 1995. Federal policy is still in effect. We know that. I know people will say it doesn't exist. They're lying to you, okay? That being said, what, if you are elected county commissioner, what is your action plan to get together with feds and end this misery that Josephine County and our surrounding communities are experiencing? I hate to start with a fire joke, but you have to strike while the iron's hot. And after four, or four out of the last five years having smoky summers, we're tired of it. And so we need to organize the counties as we did for the timber and the resource fight. Organize them to get better policies out of the federal government. And now the federal government is actually friendly to changing some of those administrative rules that were put in place 25 years ago and less than that with our last president. And so I think now is the time to push forward on those things, get the coalition of counties that are affected by this, and state your case about the loss of tourism dollars, the, uh, the loss of resources that we're not able to log, even the, the burnt uh, logs, and to get those roads maintained so that we can get back in there. We need to have faster response to the initial flame up like they did on Jones Creek near Grants Pass and I-5, they had that thing put out within four or five hours or totally managed. And that's the kind of response we need to have to every fire that starts. Even if they're in difficult places, we have the technology to fight those. And so now's the time to gather the steam, to get the evidence from the uh, local businesses that the effect the fire has on them, and use that to get the policies changed back to our advantage, back to the level playing field. We don't want a handout from the federal government. We know how to work. We know how to pay taxes. That's what we'd rather do. We don't want the handout, but if you won't give us permission, then we want the money. And that's what we have to fight for. Thank you, Darren. Ron, what's your action plan? Sorry, keep it moving, folks, okay? When, when, when this county was formed, all, all the property inside that line was county land. 
when when the land when the forest reserve which morphed into the national forest was made there was a promise made to us the promise was we know we're taking your tax base so we're going to make payment in lieu of taxes in one form or another whether it be the onc lands or harvest off the national forest there's two laws that require the federal agencies to coordinate with county local county governments the national environmental protection act and the federal lands management policy act both those laws require that, the, that when they make a forest plan and they're getting ready to redo the Northwest Forest Plan which has been very dreadful for the Northwest so they're required to sit down and coordinate with the county we need to force them to the coordination table this is ultimately important but we have to do what we are due diligence at the county level and make sure we address our comprehensive plan so that when we get them to the coordination table we can have our plan implemented. This is ultimately important for the long-term benefit of Josephine County to reduce the fire, to, to reduce the smoke, to produce from the ground again that funds our share. All of these things are gonna come about through a coordination process. There's a, a, a change in the wind coming out of DC that I haven't seen in 30 years. They're actually asking what we think out here in the West. Yeah. What do we think about the problems we're having with the forest fires? What do we think about our economic downturns? I haven't heard that in 30 years. And I'm so excited that actually now is the time to push forward with this coordination issue. There's a way. When you go into a negotiation, that's what we're talking about, negotiation with the federal agencies, you cannot go in from a position of weakness. So what's the lever that the county's going to use? It's roads, and I'm not going to go into this, this, this issue too deep because it's pretty deep. There's an old statute that says RS-2477. Those roads are our leverage to force these guys to the coordination table. And if you want to know more about what I just said, you can ask me any time. So we have to force them to the coordination table. That's the answer. We have some help in D.C., which we haven't had for 30 years. Now's the time to push forward as a county. We'll start with that too. All right, um, Jackson County getting chewed up with a controversy over the smart meter implementation for Pacific Power. I probably have about 15 questions in this uh, stack in here, so we're going to talk about that for a little bit here. Uh, as County Commissioner, Ron, what would you do to interpose and uh, get the PUC to listen to the concerns of the people? Because there seem to be many. I, I, I think that's a very important issue. I don't know how many of you have studied smart meters. It's, it's not good, okay? I got a friend who's an uh, electrical engineer. I've been working on the smart grid for 10 years. It's all about controlling energy. It's all about controlling energy. But the smart meters, I don't know if you guys know about these things, but they, they can actually catch on fire quite readily, and they have a habit of overcharging you five or 600%. Yeah. They're not a good thing. So I don't understand why. Uh, PP&L just backed down a little bit on the, uh, the funding of that. A as a county commissioner, I would be an advocate for the people's will. What the people want, I would listen to them and express that. There's a lot of things that commissioner doesn't have control over. But one thing I have control over is advocating for the people's rights, for property rights, for reducing the crime, for uh, reducing the smoke. I can advocate for that from the bully pulpit, as one president said, you can advocate for a lot of things. Can I affect them? Yeah, a lot of times it's just talking about stuff that makes a difference. Bringing it to people's mind, keeping the pressure up, like meth and heroin. How come nobody talks about that anymore? Meth and heroin is killing our county, it's killing our youth. It's creating a lot of homelessness and a lot of the drug problem. So advocating is important. So I would continue to advocate for force issues, for stopping the crime, stopping the smoke. I would be your voice at that table. Thank you, Rock. Gary, you want to handle the smart meter interposition? Sure. Um, as some of you know, I'm an electrical contractor, so I actually get to play around the meter base every now and then. Um, I'm surprised our county got so blindsided by this. Why was there not uh, advance warning to the commissioner's office? Why was there not advance warning to the customers? Um, we really feel blindsided, and, and the community scrambling to come up with a response for that. And I think the response from the commissioner's office has been a little weak. They haven't held a single uh, forum to find out where the public's at. Uh, and so I'm curious as to why they weren't prepared for this. And I know that their smart meters have been in California for quite a while now, 
I know that the technology is there and some of it's misunderstood and some of it is totally understood. And so I understand your fears, but I, we need to get to the bottom of it, not at the 11th hour like we're trying to now, but we should have been ahead of this one from the beginning. And obviously the, the main arguments are the opt-out fees are incredibly unfair. Um, the, why can't you read your own meter and they can come once a year? Uh, how hard would it be? And so uh, I feel like those are the kind of things that the county commissioners should be anticipating, that there's stuff coming down the pipe. That's their job. They're representing you and supposed to find out things that you don't have time to find out in your daily life. And so as a county commissioner, I'm going to try and keep us from being blindsided like this again, because that doesn't help anyone. And then we, we don't have time to prepare an intelligent argument. We have to rely on what we can scramble with. And I, I think we could have done a much better job. I think the, the PUC is giving us our, our day or an extra day, but they're not, they're not going to change their trajectory easily. And so, uh, so this, this ship is nearly sailed. And I don't know if we can get the fees changed. That's where, that's where the fight's at now. I think the smart meters are coming. But the, those fees for opting out are just completely unreasonable and unfair. And they need to uh, answer that intelligently. Thank you. Garen, let's, let's start the next question to uh, Garen. Should urban growth, I'm sorry, urban growth or county uh, residents be able to get a vote on whether they are annexed into a city? Yes or no? These are going to be quick ones for both of you. I'm just going to fire it off. Someone said that to me. Well, I totally believe they should get a vote because changing your situation without representation is one of the basic principles. But when I tried to push for that, there's only like one county in the USA that has it right now. And it's a vacation community in uh, Tennessee. And they got it because uh, half the people don't live there half the year. There's snowbirds there. It's one of those kind of cities. Um, but it's, it just seems that it is uh, unfair to ask you to, or change your tax rate without your permission. And so, uh, we could try and fight that fight, but I've heard that, of course, we live in a blue state, and it's a very tough fight to win because other communities have tried and haven't come away successful. You know, it's really funny that that question should come up. Uh, there was an annex, annexing a property over by the Grand Pass Golf Course, about 120 homes. Uh, eight people, they didn't have enough consent. You got like, you got to have about 60% consent forms to annex, okay? They didn't have enough consent forms to annex that property in. So eight people lawyered up, tried to stop the city from annexing them in because they didn't want to see the taxes triple. Well, the city pushed forward regardlessly. And what's funny about that is where they threw the line. That was a whole street, and you go up and you take a, call, you take a left, and you go into a little cul-de-sac, and there's about 10 homes there. When they drew that line, they excluded that cul-de-sac. Unfortunately, their father's house within that cul-de-sac, one house from the line. So annexing, yeah, should they have a voice? Yes, they should have a voice. Should it be done honestly? Yes. Maybe he wants to answer why his father's house was not included in that annex. All right, appreciate that. Uh, next question we will have, and Ron, you'll start this one. Along with uh, smart mirrors and taxes, we haven't touched taxes yet, have we? Uh, the homeless, panhandling, uh, the Bob Rush and Josephine, Jackson County too for that matter. What is your plan for the, what county role do you think should be played in alleviating, in alleviating the homeless issues that Josephine County does have? Well, it's a nationwide problem. Go to Seattle and go to LA and look at, look at what the problem they have. So it's a nationwide problem. Most of it stems from our, our, our meth and heroin that problem, and, and a tad bit about affordable housing, but I think the vast majority of these guys is it, from meth and heroin. So right back to fully funding the sheriff. Fully fund the sheriff and seriously go after the meth and heroin problem. What that's gonna go a long way is to cut and down on the homeless problem. These guys that, that wanna get treatment, there's plenty of treatment programs out here. Most of the burglary, most of the crime in this county is caused from meth and heroin addicts. It's trying to get the money for their fix. They can't hold a job because they're addicted. So, so it's, it really boils down to funding the sheriff, going after the drug dealers, the people bringing the, uh, the heroin in, the people manufacturing the meth here. I think we've become a major exporter of meth, this county has, which is a disgrace, okay? We have to go after those people. And the way you do that is you get the little guy 
and he squeaks and squeaks and squeaks, and finally you get the big guy that's doing this meth and heroin. I would like to see a lot more attention paid to that issue of going, going after the meth and heroin. I think that'll go a long ways to solving some, but maybe not all, of our, our, our homeless problems. Affordable housing would help. Uh, apartment buildings. The, part, the biggest apartment complex in Josephine County was Riverwoods. It was bought by a California company and doubled the rent overnight. <clears throat> doubled the rent overnight. It put, I had several calls from people because they just couldn't afford that rent. So why have we not built some larger apartment complexes in Grants Pass and in Cape Junction? That'll go a long ways to affordable housing. I, I know why we haven't, but anyway. All right. Thank you, Ron. And Darren, how would you then you know, attack all those housing issues there too? Go ahead. Well, let me just loop back and answer the question about my dad's house. Uh, that was determined by a five-year long process of a committee that recommended the lines, then the state approved those lines, then the city council had a choice to vote on it or not, and I did not vote as mayor, so I was not in that process. When it came up towards the vote, someone mentioned that my dad's property is outside. I'm going, really? I didn't even look to see if it was. So uh, I certainly didn't have a uh, personal uh, advantage for my, my family in mind. Um, homelessness is a misnomer to me because we really, when we're talking homelessness, let's talk about homeless. Because homeless people have a different set of problems than transients and vagrants and or hobos is the old word. And so if you're homeless and circumstances are against you, but you're trying to get out of those circumstances to get back into a home, then let's address that separately than we're talking about the transient vagrant problem that we have. Uh, our city has done so much to try and combat that, but the horses were already out of the gate or all the feathers were out of the pillow, whatever you want to call it. It's, and it's the climate, so apparently they like it here. But we've developed nuisance intervention teams to go through downtown before the business owners get down there to make sure there's no one sleeping in front of your business. Uh, we've also worked with service providers to change their business model, like St. Vincent de Paul. We helped them get a mobile food cart so people wouldn't be in downtown, and they're now helping in a better way to people that actually need it at local church parking lots and other areas instead of that downtown business. So we've tried some things. We started a sobering center first in the state that had uh, this, that designation, got it pushed through the legislature and got it up and running and it's functioning very well now as a place to take people who haven't broken any laws because it's okay to be drunk in Oregon and walking around. And, but as soon as you commit a crime, then they can arrest you. But where do we put these people that are drunk or on some other drug? The sobering center works and there's treatment options coming out of there. And so the city has addressed this, but it's one of those problems that the community has to take on. We have too many people handing out free junk out their window and enabling these people to live in the cracks of our society without getting involved and being uh, participating members. And so it's a tough one. You've got churches that have their best heart in mind that are trying to help people, but are they really when they're just handing stuff out the door? And so. That's, that's the crux of the problem for me. We need to change the mindset that, hey, we're, if I want to help you, then I'm going to take some steps and volunteer or uh, get in an organization that helps people that are in trouble like you or choosing to be living outside of society's lines. Let's do the volunteerism and not just hand free stuff out the window. That, that's where I think we're, we're, we're missing the, the solution is right there. Thank you, Jeremy. Running right, quickly out of time, I want to get one more in. There's a 200, 250 billion, 300 billion, who knows what the real count is. And uh, we'll have you uh, start off with this one too. The gorilla in the room, which is the, underfund the underfunded PERS mandate. Every lawyer is having to deal with this. You probably cannot cut Josephine County's budget to prosperity enough in order to pay it. Without raising taxes, the T word, Nobody wants to hear that, we all know that. What is a potential revenue stream that you as a county commissioner might be open to, to explore, because we know we're gonna to have to pay these bills? Any thoughts? Darren, we'll let you take a crack at that. Yeah, it's one of those problems you really hope not to inherit, that was started by someone else and allowed to run free so long that they were getting an unfair advantage. And that tier one PERS, is uh, the one that's killing us, the one that's, that's choking the whole purse system. 
And uh, cities like Grants Pass have done well to save money on the side to try and deal with that PERS bubble of Tier 1 and negotiated Tier 2 and Tier 3 with the union negotiations um, to make sure that we're doing the best we can for the future to keep those costs down. Uh, there also was an opportunity to let uh, employees share in the health insurance and I think that's a possibility for the county when the, in the future negotiations that you need to work in other ways to save money so that you have the money to pay the PERS liability that you have. Um, the county can also uh, run out the clock. They had such low funding that many employees were either let go or left to find a more stable uh, environment for their career. And that helped because those, some of those were the tier one ones and hopefully they transferred to another community that can uh, take their liability. But that kind of helped uh, uh, the county move uh, in a different direction because they didn't have to choose to do that. The voters decided there wasn't uh, a need to fund at that level. So let's see what the county can do at that low funding level. And I think that did change uh, the PERS liability for our county. Now it's still a problem and we need to uh, address it but there's no golden goose that's going to solve that problem. It's just going to take some discipline and running out the clock till that tier one uh, pool is empty. Thanks, Mayor. Ron, you want to take a uh, crack at that? Any, any revenue stream that might come to mind? And <laughs> trees? Can we use trees? Why not trees? I mean, it only did. It only funded the county for 80 years. So why didn't we kick them to the curb? Yeah. Because there's a few extreme yeah. environmentalists out there that think you should cut a tree. But well, wait a second, they're dead. They're dead, that will fund us, it really will. Uh, as far as PERS go, first thing I do is I wouldn't let the county commissioners who have vested in PERS negotiate the contract. <laughs> that doesn't sound right to me. You know, it's like having the fox watch, watch the hen house. Come on, here. So that's the first thing I do. That should be an open process. It shouldn't be behind closed doors, okay? The revenue streams, we're Josephine County. We're not Jackson County. Have you ever looked at the difference between Josephine County and Jackson County? It's like night and day, okay? We, we have a, a, a very small commercial industrialized base. I could take all the commercialized land, all the industrial land in Josephine County, put it in one hunk, take it over to White City, plop it on Boise Cascade lot that wouldn't even cover a quarter of the lot. <laughs> We're not Jackson County. We don't have a huge tax base. They have a huge tax base. Revenue streams. What's made Josephine County, how, how come a county that has billions and billions of dollars of mineral does not have one working mind? How come a county that has thousands of beautiful trees out there, in fact, we have too many trees, how come we're not harvesting? How come we don't have a sawmill when the one time we had 30? We've got to stand up and defend the producers from the ground. Producing from the ground, it doesn't matter if you're a New England fishing village, an Iowa farm town, a Nevada mining camp, or an Oregon timber town. The day that you stop producing that commodity, that resource that built your communities, the day you start to die, that's what we're struggling through in this county. Yeah. It's time to realize that and stand up. Yeah. Right. some other things good before. Okay. Uh, Ron, you might as well stand up there because it's uh, your turn, I guess, to close, and then Derek Powell will close. All right, closing comments. The job description is county commissioner, not city council. You need balance on that board. You already have two former city councilors who serve with my opponent. You need balance on the board. You need somebody who understands county issues. You need somebody who's out in the county, who's been in the county, who knows this county like the back of his hand, who's talked to the people in the rural areas, who understands Forest Service, who understands BLM, who understands the miners and the loggers. That's me. I know this stuff. I've been living it all my life. So the job description is county commissioner. So you got to understand the county. Josephine County established 1856. All right. The first two county seats, the first one was Waldo, a mining community. The second was Kirby, a mining community. But the railroads came through 1880, it was Grass Pass. 
Those outlying communities are so important to the lifeblood of our county. That's why it's a county commissioner, not a city council's job, all right? So you want somebody who really, really understands the, city, the county. I do. Family's been here 100 years. They were loggers, farmers, ranchers, miners. I've, I've had mining claims. The miners all support me. Why don't we have a working mine in our county producing jobs, high-paying jobs, long-term jobs? How come we don't have a sawmill in our county producing lumber that the nation needs, producing good-paying jobs? I know my family, several of them, lived and raised their whole family off the rough and ready sawmill. Now it's gone. All right. We can still benefit from those trees because the ONC land, uh, we're number three on the, on the dole out for ONC. In other words, we're the third highest the county is. So when those ONC cuts come in, we get a hunk of money. All right. When it's harvest off the national forest land, we, get, we pay for our schools and our roads. We've got to understand the issues that confront a county commissioner on a daily basis. I do understand those things. I know them very well. Well, our county has faced some big problems. And one of my biggest disappointments is that when the ONC changed uh, back in the 90s, uh, our county commissioners didn't fight. They just said, oh, this money will last forever. Uh, these payment in lieu of taxes. And it didn't last forever. Um, so the federal government's not keeping up their part of the bargain. Either give us permission to do the work that we know how to do in the forest, in the mine, or give us the money. Um, and I think it's... Uh, the lawsuit that Simon Hare helped spearhead with a coalition of counties is really uh, where the fight is right now. And we have a friendly federal government, in some respects, to this issue, uh, more than there has been since uh, the 90s. And so uh, I, I think that we can work through that problem. But timber and money is not the only answer. The uh, cannabis industry, uh, needs to pay their fair share and not just come uh, uh, take our resources for their own advantage. Um, that's a possibility, but you can't pick winners and losers. So are you going to also tax the vineyard? And so it's a, a squirrely one. But Dave Daniels' idea uh, that was recently successful to get the marijuana task force is another way to get help in that regard. We don't have to take it necessarily from the plant grower or the processor. We need to take it from the revenue that's already there at the state that they're using for God knows what when we're the ones having the trouble from the problem they created. And so as your county commissioner, I look forward to help solving those kind of problems. And I've really enjoyed raising my family here, starting a business here, getting to know so many of uh, the community members. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to living out my life here. And uh, if county commissioner is one of those uh, temporary jobs, I'm not sure yet. Maybe we'll talk myself right out of a job and we'll change the structure of county government so that there isn't three commissioners, that maybe there was a professional manager in some other structure. Uh, because it, it has shown to be difficult in the past to have three commissioners there. And I'd be willing to cut my own throat on that um, if that's what it comes to, if that's what the citizens want. I think that question should at least be vetted out and asked. It may be answered uh, one way or the other, uh, but I think it should be asked. And so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this complex fight. And I have the experience from uh, all my volunteerism at the city to do the job. I've got a lot of inroads with, the, with ODOT, with um, the uh, Oregon League of Cities, the Oregon League of Counties. I've got... Uh, ideas that have uh, really come out of Bend and come out of uh, Klamath and other areas that I think we can implement here. And so if we all work on this together, if we decide what direction we're going to go, then I'm going to be the one to help you get there. Um, I've done it for years now and I want to do it in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big hand to your next county commissioner.